The sons of Zebedee had a very courageous mother who knew how to intercede for her sons because she was so daring that she was willing to go to Jesus, wishing to ask him for something. And it was the Lord who perceived that she came to him with a question. And the Lord says, what do you wish? He asks us, what do we wish? What is at the core of our hearts? What are we looking for? What are our wishes? But also, if we are aware what our profound desires are. The faith helps us to go deeper and to find out what lays at the bottom of our hearts not on a superficial level, because if it were so, and the Lord granted us a very superficial wishes and our expectations, in the long run, they wouldn't be so saving, meaningful, and um, uh, helpful for our sanctification. On one hand, the Lord wants us to pronounce and put in words what our wishes are. On the other hand, he wants to purify them. Because she says, command. You see how she asks him, command. You, Jesus, must command and follow what I want. That these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Basically, I want my sons to be in your glory. Those who are sitting on the right and on the left, back in antiquity, particularly when it comes to the king, a ruler, they enjoyed all the privileges and the authority of the ruler. She's asking that James and John might be elevated, be on the a lamp stand visible to all and partake in Jesus' glory. But again, we have no idea what our requests are all about. Because Jesus himself says, you do not know what you're asking. We can throw words very freely without much reflections. But deep within, do we really know what we are asking for? How we are even getting into what it is all about, we are expecting. Because right away, the Lord says, but can you drink the chalice that I'm going to drink? And they said, because they were at the side, we can. Very unthoughtful. The chalice refers here to the passion, to the suffering. And the Lord is saying, look, To get to where I am, one of the part of it is to drink the chalice of the passion. This image of the chalice has to do also with the Old Testament when the prophet spoke about the wrath of God being manifested in this chalice that is overflowing. The one who drank this chalice was Jesus. He took upon himself the entire wrath we may say the anger of God that was rightly to be administered to the people. And he drank this chalice so that now we can be spared from the wrath, as St. Paul speaks about. And they said, well, we can. We say very uh, free the words, we can, we can do it, how um, things actually can work out. But again, the Lord says, my chalice you will indeed drink. And St. James is a proof of it. He would drink the chalice of martyrdom, of shedding his blood. But when it comes to the places of honor, they are reserved only for those for whom the Heavenly Father prepared them. In heaven, as the mystics teach, There are places prepared for us. But what draws my attention is that 
there are different also hierarchy and you may say even vicinity to the throne of God. Those who did the Father's will perfectly, those who uh, were in line with the desires of God the Father, asking continually and praying that the Holy Spirit may make them do what God is pleased by, these are the closest. Because also there are those who fought tooth and nail their whole lives to make God do their will. Please do this for me, do that for me, make sure you do this for me, and you do that for me. Like over here. Please command that these two sons of mine be at the right and on the left in your kingdom. I'm dictating to you, God, what you are supposed to do. It doesn't work like that. The kingdom belongs to those who will start asking what you, Lord, would like me to do and where would you like me to uh, be and to work and what mission you have for me. That's a very, there's a shift of uh, the understanding. If we were to ask the Lord every single day, where would you like me to go? What would you like me to do? What is your plan for my life? How can I be, and here is an important word, a servant of yours, a slave of yours, where I can put myself under your guidance and be an instrument of salvation for those you are sending me to? That's what the Lord would like us to hear. If you read the lives of the saints, they all say the same thing. What is, Lord, your will? What would you like me to do? Sometimes it would even take them years of asking. To the point that their agendas are all cleared out and God may say, this is the reason why I created you and that's my plan. And in this design, you will be fulfilled, you will be happy, you will be overabounding. Your life will be meaningful. However, if we stick to our own designs and plans and wishes, oftentimes very self-centered, very much tainted by vainglory, by pride, by uh, things that we are aspire, aspiring to, God's will might not be fulfilled in us, as St. Faustina teaches, if you read her diary, that God would like to enact his will, his plan of sanctification in us, but we can be so effective in blocking him, in putting all the obstacles, that the grace has no way to enter, because first of all, we'll be avoiding his inspiration. Secondly, we'll be steeped in our sins and then constantly looking for us to shine forth instead of being at the service of Jesus Christ, who at the end, speaking about himself, says, the Son of Man did not come to be served, and he's God himself. He's the one whom we are supposed to uh, pay our homage and serve. But to serve, and not only that, to give his life as a ransom for many. That's the point of coming of Jesus Christ. To be at the service. Sure enough, teaching, healing, delivering, helping, lifting people up. Oftentimes, surrounded by the crowds, not having a minute even to breathe. Where he would be casting out the demons, helping those who are in need. Till dying on the cross. And we may ask, is this a life uh, well lived, well spent, that is meaningful, that we may say shines forth? From the divine perspective, yes, it is. Because you are so self, uh, selfless, so abandoned to God, that ultimately it brought salvation to all. Now, those who are partaking with Jesus in this life, receiving the Holy Spirit, become as he did, which means the servant of everyone else, which means bringing the salvation, the gifts to this 
mystery, which is our lives, so that others can be uh, saved, can receive the Holy Spirit. Let us ask that we too, today, may drink the chalice, which means the will of God that comes to our lives, where there are sometimes it might be bitter, but it's always given to us by the Lord, which means sustained by His grace. And that way, we can also partake in the spirit that Christ prepared for us.